What unites this 100-year-old gag and this modern CGI gag? I am a god, you dull creature, and I will not be bullied by that. Believe it or not, but there's at least one thing that makes them both work, and that's the art of the unexpected. In this video, we're not trying to explain the nature of humor, but trying to answer the elusive question, how does visual comedy make us laugh? Back in Buster Keaton's days, there were way less expensive means than what cinematographers have today, but yet he still managed to settle the universal rule of the genre, even for future generations. If you take a look at his gags, you'll notice that in most cases, they only work if something unexpected happens on screen. Like here. When you see these two lovebirds chatting to each other, you don't expect the table to sink. Just like you don't expect Mr. Keaton to fly away with the car just a second after he stops running. Now some of you might say that slapstick comedy isn't really funny nowadays, and we agree, the genre is definitely outdated. But the principle that Buster Keaton followed still lives on today. The visual joke has to be unexpected. If you take a look at more up-to-date comedies, you'll see this exact principle in a lot of them. Access denied. Access denied. And in cartoons, too. The joke will have more chance of working if it can break the audience's expectations, offering something bigger than what they're looking for. May I smoke my pipe as well? Please uh, go and make yourself at home. Gags can also be about inventing a funny look for characters. For example, breaking the stereotypical idea of what burglars should look like. Or even about blowing people's minds by changing a legendary movie studio's intro that's been around for decades. The more filmmakers blindside us, the better. However, the true magic starts when cinematographers choose not only what to show in the frame, but also what not to show us first. Here's a great example. Watching this scene from Top Secret, you immediately think that Nick Rivers is in trouble when, actually, he isn't. Or you are simply watching a dialogue and initially have no clue that the hero is talking to Hitler. I don't think I can do this. Russ? Of course you can! An unexpected character appearance in a frame can be just as funny as an unexpected character disappearance. Do what now? I said tell Miss Laura goodbye. Bye, Miss Laura. By playing with camera movements, cinematographers can show us more of a scene, creating the needed effect and making us laugh. More than that, a dramatic camera movement itself can trick us too. For example, when we see a crane up, we automatically expect something dramatic to happen. I'm going home, Rita. I know, Shirley, I know. No, seriously, I'm going home. Can you help me out? Oh. So, we've talked about the possibilities inside one single shot, but of course, the potential of visual comedy doesn't end there. Take a look at this Jojo Rabbit scene. Shit. Shit. Don't do that. Every single act in it was unexpected. And at the same time, the director Taika Waititi used multiple shots to enhance the dark humor. This is literally the most common technique you see in movies. It's called editing. The simple trick that Buster Keaton denied using in his movies actually opened up a whole new world for visual comedy. In the hands of great cinematographers like Taika Waititi, editing can make even the simplest scene look funny. In this scene from Hunt for the Wilder People, a child welfare services officer gives a description of the bad boy. We talking disobedience? Stealing, spitting, running away, throwing rocks, kicking stuff, defacing stuff, burning stuff, loitering, and graffiti. Each of the shots show exactly what the officer's saying, which would be boring and unnecessary in any other genre in the world but comedy. But the power of editing doesn't end here. Mixing quick shots together, even without narration, can create both funny and dynamic effects. Edgar Wright loves this technique. He uses it to entertain us, make us laugh, and also to creatively show boring things, like moving from one place to another. Guy Ritchie does the same thing in his brilliant action comedies. You got a toothbrush? We're going to London. Do you hear that, Doug? I'm coming to London! Bang. The master of color and symmetry, Wes Anderson loves to use creative editing too. Combining it with the right camera angles, he creates humor literally out of nowhere. Probably fucks them too. I go to bed with all my friends. But 
Anderson doesn't only use editing to create humor, he uses long shots too. And another creative trick that he uses is mixing sound with music, like here in this scene from Fantastic Mr. Fox. All right, we got two circuits here. We got the yellow circuit and the green circuit. Let's just keep them separated. Hold it right there. Now we need to bring about 2% more in. Good. This video may be about the art of visual comedy, but we simply can't ignore talking a bit about sound and humor. Because in cinema, these always go together. And great filmmakers like Taika Waititi know that. It's time to name that tune. Yeah, we'll get here. Waititi plays a lot with sound to enhance the absurdity of a situation, and even silence in his work serves a purpose, to build the suspense of the upcoming gag. In this scene from What We Do in the Shadows, Waititi tries to wake up the Nosferatu-looking vampire. He softens the pitch of his voice in an attempt to be gentle with 8,000-year-old Peter. Peter, 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 wake up. <laughs> The silence breaks with Peter's creepy growl, which both scares us and makes us laugh. Another great example of how sound complements visual comedy is seen in Mr. Bean's famous performance at the London Olympic Games. The whole scene is built on Mr. Bean playing one single key on the piano for five minutes straight. His role was supposed to be about keeping in the background, but he actually steals the show. This example is also interesting because it illustrates another famous trick of visual comedies, the one where all the fun happens in the background. Remember the scene from the third Harry Potter movie where Harry leaves the Dursleys? This is the trick we're talking about. We see it so many times in movies, but perhaps the funniest example of putting a joke in the background happened in Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. You're outside? Is Scott here? Uh, you know what? He just left. This scene also works because of how absurd it is. Knives sees Scott leave in the wildest way possible, but she acts like nothing special happened. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry because sometimes it's not enough for the cinematographers to have unexpected jokes or be creative with editing and play with sounds and background gags. There are always those filmmakers who really need to push it to the limit. Some men just want to watch the world burn. Take Monty Python, for example, the masters of absurd comedy. These men were brave enough to break every single rule in cinema that existed at the time, like the editing rule. Ha ha! Right? More than that, Monty Python broke the rules of logic, with characters jumping on invisible horses and ignored all the known physical laws. Tis but a scratch. A scratch? Your arm's off. No, it isn't. Well, what's that then? I've heard worse. All of the Black Knight's limbs got chopped off, but not only did he not die, he still wanted to keep fighting. Come back here and take what's coming to you! I'll bite your legs off! If only we had that level of motivation. Visual humor can really differ, from silent, crazy gags to absurd, weird nonsense. Maybe you didn't even find all the clips shown in this video funny, because humor is the most subjective thing in the world. But isn't that what makes it so charming? Want to know more about how movies manipulate us? Check out the video where we talk about how rom-coms lie to us about love. Thanks for watching, and take care.